Hi, and welcome to chapter 23 of the UVM Primer coding videos. Uh, in this chapter, we're going to look at the code associated with creating UVM sequences. Uh, the book walks through sequences and says how they work. Basically, sequences are, are classes uh, and objects that can drive stimulus, and it gives a step-by-step -step approach to uh, creating a sequence, a uh, sequence-based test bench. So let's follow those steps. So the first step is to create a um, is to create a sequence that can hold our data. And so we've got one, it's called sequence item. And the sequence item is a name that uh, comes from the UVM. A UVM sequence item, it has a, some additional functionality on top of a transaction. So this is a type of transaction. We, the, the UVM extends UVM transaction to create UVM sequence item, which means we still want to have all of our do compare and do copy and all of those things in a sequence item. And here we've just taken the previous transaction, uh, renamed it to sequence item, and call extended UVM sequence item. And once again, we use UVM object utils. Now, uh, the tester in our previous test bench, that generated uh, transactions and put them into a FIFO. We replace that now with something called a UVM sequencer. Now, the sequencer is a very simple piece of code and we very rarely have to modify it. We can just use the base UVM sequencer and tell it that we want it to use sequence item. So we parameterized it. A little trick here, we create a type def and then we say UVM sequencer with the parameter we want which is sequence item and we call that sequencer. So from now on we have a type in our test bench called sequencer that is a UVM sequencer that handles our kind of sequences. The next step is to upgrade the driver takes transactions and uh, communicates with the BFM and there is actually a UVM driver now so we're going to extend UVM driver and tell the driver that we work with UV with sequence items so this notion of the sequence item now gets passed around through all the different pieces so that they'll all work together uh, the driver uh, comes with some additional objects it's got the, the sequence item port and uh, we'll see the sequence item port in action but when you extend UVM driver you automatically get something called sequence item port and uh, when instead of doing just a get you do sequence item port uh, get next item and it works a lot like the get did in the previous uh, incarnation of our transaction level stimulus uh, now if we look at the uh, environment and we've gone back to our pre-agent environment uh, we instantiate the sequencer, which we remember is of type sequencer, and the driver. And so we instantiate th both of those uh, in, the, uh, in the environment. And then in the connect phase, we connect driver.h, sequence item port. Remember, that's something we got because we extended UVM driver. Dot connect, and we pass it sequencer under h dot sequence item export and that object we got because we made a, a type that used UVM sequencer. So you can see now the, the UVM driver and the UVM sequencer fit together and by specifying the type of sequence item we make it all, all, all of this work together. So now we have a, a sequencer connected to a driver. Uh, if we look more closely at that driver, the driver just sits in a loop. It uh, it gets the next item, which is a sequence item. It uses the BFM as we always have. This has not changed. We pass it A, B, the operation, and now we read the result back. Remember the fourth uh, argument we didn't used to use, where we would re we'd return the result, but now we read the result back from the tiny ALU operation, and we store that result in the command that we receive. Now we talked a little bit about this moo cow idea. We are supposed to. If you're going to modify a transaction you receive, you're supposed to make a copy first to modify the copy. We don't want to do that here. We want to write the result into the transaction because we know that the sequence that called, that created this transaction, it has a handle to this transaction, to this item, and it wants to pull the data out of that item when we're finished. So we're using that, that fact that two objects have a handle of the same item to our advantage to pass data back from an operation. All right, so now we have um, the mechanism in place for sequences to work. And the goal of sequences is to be able to create uh, a variety of behaviors uh, without having to create a bunch of different objects. If we look into the into 
the uh, the directory associated with sequences in chapter 23, uh, we see that there are several. There's a parallel sequence and a random sequence and a runall sequence. So we can create different tests. This max mult sequence does the maximum multiplication. We can create different tests, so we can create different sequences. We can put sequences together. We can run sequences in parallel. There are a lot of different things that we can do uh, with sequences to, that are very flexible. Uh, in our case, uh, we're going to look at the Fibonacci sequence, which is sort of a pun because it implements the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, the reason we're doing the Fibonacci sequence, sequence is that uh, it requires us to read data back from the tiny ALU. Most of our tests just drive data into the tiny ALU and rely on the scoreboard to tell if things are working. Uh, th for this to work, it actually has to read data back. And it's important to know how to write a sequence that can read data back from a dot. So we see here how we do this. We have a class called Fibonacci sequence that extends UB UVM sequence. And notice once again, we've told it the type of the sequence item. Uh, the sequences are also objects. So we use object util and we use the object, um, the object uh, constructor. Now all sequences have a task called body. And body is a lot like the run phase in a constructor, I mean in a component. Uh, it's a lot like the run phase in a component in that it, it automatically runs and does the thing that the sequence is supposed to do. It's, um, it also runs in its own, um, it, 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 so it also runs in its own time. It gets launched uh, by the sequencer. And what a body does is it creates sequence items and passes them to the sequencer. And so how, and so how does it do that? Well, when you extend UVM sequence, you get a couple of methods available to you, a start item and finish item. So what you do is you create a command, and here we're creating a, a sequence item of type command, and you call start item and pass it the command. The command is of type sequence item up there. And um, what that does is that blocks until the sequencer is ready to let you have access to the test bench. So everybody else runs and does their stuff. You call start item. When they're all finished and it's your turn, then start item returns. And now you can do things in the command. You can read data from different parts of the test bench. You can load the command up with data. In our case, we're just setting this command to reset up. And then on finish item, uh, that blocks until the command is complete. So we block on start item until the test bench is ready for us. And we block on finish item until the command is complete. And in, the, in this particular case, we're just resetting. Now we're starting up our, our Fibonacci sequence. We put in the first two just, as a, just to get ourselves going. And, uh, and now we start a loop. So we're using the Fibonacci number starting at 3, going to 14. And what do we do? We call start item. And we say, uh, so now we wait. Now the, when the test bench is ready for us, when the sequencer says it's our turn, we... Uh, fill A with N minus 2, because if you remember the Fibonacci sequence, it's take two numbers, like 1 uh, one and 2, and you add them and you get 3, 2 and 3 gets you 5, 3 and 5 gets you 8, so you take two numbers and add them to get the next one. So we take N minus 2 and N minus 1, and uh, we set the op to add op. On a finish item, we now send that command into the test bench, and we block until the command is done. Uh, how do we know the command is done? The driver calls item done. So we see now that uh, how this works. We don't come back until the driver is called item done, and the driver doesn't call item done until it's put the result in. So we have finish item. Now we, we, I, we know that our operation is finished. We copy n minus 1 to n minus 2, and we read the result out of the command and copy it into n minus 1. Remember, we put the result in the command here, in the driver. The driver read the result back from the BFM. The driver sent this command into the BFM, got the result, wrote the result back into the command, called item done. Item done freed up finish item. Finish item, and now we know that we have data. We do our read from the command into our test, and we type out the, we write out the latest Fibonacci number, and we loop around again. And we, in this case, we loop 11 times or 12 times. And, uh, and then finish out of the test. So this, uh, so that now we have a sequence, and now we want to run that sequence uh, in a test. So sequences run uh, using a sequencer, and we start a sequence by telling uh, the sequencer that it should run on. So let's go take a look at our tests. 
Uh, we have a um, we have a base test. We have a tiny ALU base test, and this is extends UVM test. So this is just like all the other tests that we've done, except it's a virtual class, so you can't actually run the base test. You have to extend it. And uh, what this does is it has the build phase handled, so it, it puts the environment in place. Uh, in, the in the end of elaboration phase, after the environment is completely set up, it knows that there is a sequencer under H in there. Remember, we stored that in the environment when we created it. Right here is sequencer H, and sequencer H is defined in the environment. And now in our base test, we build the environment, and then at the end of elaboration phase, we know the environment's completely built, we read out the sequencer handle and we store it in a local handle called sequence, or sequencer under H. Now any test that extends the tiny ALU base test has a handle to the sequencer uh, in, the, um, in, in our test, uh, in our environment. So now we'll, we'll use a Fibonacci test. And what the Fibonacci test does is it creates a Fibonacci sequence. There's a Fibonacci sequence declared. We create a new Fibonacci sequence. We call raise objection to say, don't stop this test bench, we're busy. And then we call, on the sequence, we call the start method. So every sequence has a start method. We call the start method, and we pass the sequencer a handle of the sequence, a handle to the sequencer. So this Fibonacci sequence has a method called start. Start has an argument. The argument is the sequencer that we'll be running on. Once we call start, then what happens is we, uh, we start up the Fibonacci sequence, the body, the body method starts, we go to start item, start item relates to the sequencer that we just were handed, and that sequencer blocks us until we're ready, and then it sends the data into the driver, and uh, doesn't return until the driver says the item done. All of this fits together so that you can create very flexible test benches. Um, for example, <clears throat> the run-all sequence has several other sequences inside of it. And we see here that we created a reset sequence, a max mult sequence, and a random sequence. And then in our body, we, uh, we start the reset sequence, then the max mult sequence, then the random sequence. Uh, we can also do things like we can run sequences in parallel. So in this case, we fork and join the uh, we we start do the reset sequence, reset start, then we do Fibonacci start and short random start in parallel because we used fork and join because we use join uh, we won't return until both of these guys have finished, and so they run uh, each in parallel, and the sequencer manages the arbitration between. Them. So that's the last piece of the UVM primer is sequencers. Uh, with that, you have all of the different pieces that you know that you need to use the UVM. Uh, I encourage that if you have any questions uh, that uh, you ask them on the Facebook page or in the comments here. And also, if you haven't got the book, uh, the UVM primer, that book really goes into all of the details around these examples that I've been explaining. Good luck with the UVM.